thank you, thank you a lot. And okay, here we are. So I'm glad to be here in front of you. And Sergey gave a talk today about uh, different uh, screen readers and about uh, this checklist, accessibility checklist. And I will conti continue with my talk about some implementation. Uh, impl implementation, a, a mad, 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 mad search bar. Uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> OK. No, still doesn't work. Uh, so shit happens. Everything's fine. Uh, yeah, part one. But first of all, I think I have to introduce myself. So my name is Roman, and I'm from uh, Siberia. Uh, and obviously, this is not me, obviously, uh, but this is me for sure. In this picture, my mates and I are rocking and rolling, and we play rock music. I play the guitar bits and sing a bit, and our band is called Hangbird. But I'm not just only rocking and rolling. Um, this is me, and I've been working as a front end developer for almost four years, and two years I organized uh, Coldfest conference, uh, Frontfest. Uh, Moscow conference and two, maybe in half years, I work for 2GIS. 2GIS or 2GIS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And 2GIS, for those who don't know, uh, is a local search company that develops maps of cities in some European countries, in the CIS, in Chile, and the UAE, and some, some other parts of the world. And um, I worked uh, a team called Digital, which is responsible for some uh, special projects, let's say. And for those years, I had a hand in developing also many projects, such as our main product, uh, to js.com or .ru, uh, our advertising website, our help center, and recently released um, game, game to, uh, to GIS .ru, or we can translate it, uh, interpret as uh, neighborhoods. So raise your hands who have uh, played this game. Not that much. So I strongly recommend you to play this game and check your knowledge of the place you live in. So, uh, OK, after of all these uh, projects, I realized that uh, there was something that I'd done um, lots of times. Do you see anything in common um, on all these websites? Of course you see, because you know the title of my talk. Uh, this is a search bar. <laughs> and it might sound ridiculous, but uh, it's really hard to implement components. Uh, and I done it, I've done it a couple of times, and I'm still not confident if I could make another one, especially in React, without making any mistakes. So uh, what problems and mistakes I'm talking about? I'm talking about a, uh, should it be a controlled or uncontrolled component? Um, about different behaviors in different browsers, uh, especially in mobile browsers. Uh, about uh, should I focus uh, search and clear button, and even should I have them? And last but not least is accessibility. So uh, to answer this question, I split my talk into a few parts. Uh, the first will be about the appearance of uh, the search bar, and uh, the second will be about the interaction. And all of these parts are split into a user's point of view and what a developer should do for it. So let's start from a user. And to find something, you have to know how it sounds and even looks and um, no, I missed the thing. <laughs> Looks and even sounds like. So I'm, I'm sure that all of you know almost everything about search bars, uh, so it will be easy. But we have to talk about it. So typically, it has a magnifying glass icon. Uh, it's not about hand lens, but about something that clearly specifies this is a search bar uh, and can be even a separated button. The next thing is a placeholder that just helps users with data entry. Uh, OK, and the last thing is a clear icon. Just uh, lets users to uh, remove the search term instantly. OK, and that's it. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> OK, uh, but what if you were trying to um, use this uh, form with a screen reader? I bet you you'd like to have some verbal indications, such as what this input is, 
uh, what to do with it, what data can be found on this website, uh, what form is fork used right now, and what the role of this form. So now we are going to implement all these things in our React component. So we start from a React component that just returns uh, input type text. OK, that's easy. But didn't we have a special type for search? Yes, we did. Uh, but does anybody in this hall know the difference between these two types? Just raise your hand. Uh, OK. So you can go. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, let's take a look at our browser. Uh, you know, a bit small to recognize anything. So let's set some some, some height and font size. And oh, uh, I know how to fix it. Everybody knows. Uh, Just uh, important. And oh, what on earth is it? What can be more powerful than important? Uh, okay, let's take a look one more time. It's our markup, so it looks like there is no magic, but uh, you know that's not quite true. To see all the magic, you have to go to your developer tools, uh, for example in Chrome, then go to Settings, uh, yeah, maybe that's low, and then to Preferences, and scroll down a bit, find Elements, uh, and click on Show Users, User Agent Shadow DOM. And that's it. Now you see all, all things that were hidden. So uh, let's take a closer close up. Uh, so it uh, doesn't look like we did it, right? <laughs> uh, you might uh, have spots some new markup, for example, this uh, WebKit search cancel button. What is it? How does it look like? Um, like this. And you'll see it every time your input has a value and when it's focused. And you know, this is uh, not the thing that th so it's users are used to this thing. And it's better to uh, leave it as, as it is. Or, for example, re-implement re your, your own. Uh, but usually, we have to make our own, our new because design and some other things. So the question is, uh, how to get rid of it. And you might have heard some uh, piece of advice to set uh, the appearance uh, of this button to none um, with this MOS prefix. <laughs> I don't know why, because this is for WebKit uh, browsers. But let's mm, dive a deep bit. Uh, yeah, a deep uh, dive a bit deeper. <laughs> okay, and, and take a look at our CSS. So. As we said, for from the moment we set our browser to show user agent shadow DOM, we can see user agent style sheet for this, uh, all this magic. So we see that our input has the appearance of search field. OK, but what is appearance? Um, you know, I tried to find uh, some information on the W3C website, but uh, this is not ready for shipping. Uh, like lots of issues. Uh, but I wrote something and to cut a long story short, uh, you know, the, uh, the appearance property is uh, responsible for, let's say, for default appearance <laughs> in CSS. Like, for example, uh, you have a button and it has round corners and its gray uh, background is gray and it's getting gray when it's clicked and all these things. It's behavior in CSS. So, and technically, you can set uh, the, the appearance of a diff to button. But it will, like, you know, uh, they just don't do it. And it, it doesn't affect uh, on uh, event handlers and has no semantics and all the things. So, to get rid of these uh, strange things, we can normalize our CSS like normalize.css does. So, this way we can just set the appearance to text field. And, okay, great. Now CSS works, uh, everything's fine, we did it. But you know, there is a browser. Um, tell me the name of this browser. You know it. This is the Internet Explorer. And uh, it has its own opinion about the appearance and its own pseudo element. So you said you have to set the display to uh, probably to none. And now it's OK. We did it finally. Um, no. Nope. We have one more browser. <laughs> it's iOS Safari. And just Let's watch some video. So it's round corners till you type at least two characters. <laughs> what, like, uh, 
there is no CSS about round corners and some stuff. So, um, okay, this is a bug, and I hope they will fix it. Maybe in a few versions. So, but now I have to reset uh, the appearance and set it to none, like reset .css does. But you uh, have to think about it carefully. Uh, okay, but we still have two types. And it's, it's time to talk about accessibility. So, uh, what's the difference between uh, these two types for screen readers? Who knows? Uh, nobody knows, okay, no difference. Uh, like, edit text field blank. Uh, so, if there is no difference, why should I use type search? Uh, uh, first, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So if, th if there is no difference, why should I use type search? Because first, this is semantically correct. Second, I lied about screen readers, and some of them emphasize this is a search input. And third, uh, search uh, type has some uh, unique some features like escape uh, key handler or you know this uh, clear button, some other things. So and Users are used to these features, so do not ruin their habits. And this is why we will use type search. Um, okay, and one more thing. Remember about different types uh, of, of inputs. Uh, mobile browsers help users by showing a special keyboard uh, more suited for different uh, input types. Like, for example, if you have uh, type number, you will see only numbers in your keyboard, right? Remember it? Uh, so we can assume that our type search somehow changes uh, users' keyboards, uh, but it doesn't. And I've definitely seen the search button instead of the return button, like this. And you know, it has nothing to do with type. Uh, and it depends on the action attribute. And I'm not kidding. And no matter what value it has, it can be just uh, an empty string. Uh, so yeah. And this works. Okay, so from this moment, we have in our component we have uh, the forum tag for what? For changing uh, users' keyboards? Mm, not. You know, forms can be regions, as was said in Sergey's uh, talk. So, if you add a role to a form, a screen reader sees it as a, a region on a web page. It means that users can easily jump to that form, to, to this form, with uh, quick navigation keys. And I'd like to draw your attention to uh, the value of role. It, it can be not only search but form, and you will have form role form. <laughs> yeah, a little bit odd, but you'll get used to it. And now it sounds like edit text field blank search. Uh, okay, so we can add some area label. And know that we don't use camel case uh, for ARIA attributes. Uh, it's important. Uh, not important. <laughs> so, yeah, we can add some uh, ARIA label, but why not, why not roles? Uh, because you add roles only for those elements that don't have semantics. Because input is a, like in uh, React terms, is a component with uh, its own semantics. You cannot override this uh, semantic. So okay, and now we hear something like search on this website, edit text, search. Okay, and we can uh, add a placeholder to help with to aid users with uh, data entry. Now it's, it will sound more clearly. And by the way, about placeholders, uh, remember this slide uh, about magic. And yeah, there is a element WebKit input placeholder, and now you know how to style your placeholder. So again, uh, again, for WebKit browsers, there is a selector. But what about other browsers? Um, most of juniors don't know that uh, you cannot write comma-separated selectors. Uh, why? It's like it's cold, like just just I uh, dry and all these things. Like why should I uh, write cold black, cold black? Because uh, when it's just one selector, and for example Chrome reads it, and it looks like oh moss, I do not understand what it is, and ignores the whole selector. So it won't work uh, in any browsers. 
So this is why I didn't list it comma separated. And uh, you might have spotted uh, different uh, different columns like double column and single column. Uh, placeholder is a pseudo element, so you have to write double column. But for some reasons, in in an explorer and all Firefox, uh, it's a pseudo class. So yeah, and do not confuse it with placeholder shown. So the class that helps us to style our input when uh, when it has no value. Like for example, um, in this demo, we. Uh, no? Didn't we? OK. So in this demo, we um, make a uh, placeholder outline pulsing when it has no value. And it looks awful. So we won't, we won't use it. OK. <laughs> and returning to the subject of our forms, I'd like to say a few words about uh, roles and regions and other things. So according to uh, W3C, uh, region landmark uh, landmarks must have uh, unique unique values uh, when they have few regions. So to clarify this rule, uh, like consider a web page with at least two different search bars, and indeed we better have um, unique labels to distinguish that f these forms. And now it will when you will uh, tap uh, from one search to another, it will sounds like blah 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 global search or search in the building. And you can ask me if I'm kidding, but I'm not. We have it in our product, like two search forms. OK, and the last thing is uh, about uh, buttons. So the order of uh, buttons matter. Because first users want to hit the search button, and only then uh, the remove button. Why? Like, you know, in the operation systems, when you want to remove something, and the system asks you, uh, if you're sure, and the focus in, uh, on, on, on the button that, no, I'm not sure. Because you can just, just misclick and, OK, just delete it. And that's all about the appearance. So I think it's time to talk about the interaction. And we can summarize some users' uh, anticipations. Uh, first, it's not disappearing search query. Why? Every time your website shows the results, uh, the search query uh, has to be at the same place to help users remember what these search results are about. OK. Uh, escape button to clear and uh, enter to search. They are already built in. Like you just use your input type search, and that's it. Cool. Isn't that cool to use native components? And clear button and search button. We've already talked about it, and we'll talk about it a bit later. Uh, but firstly, uh, I'd like to talk about the thing that I hate the most. You know, this is the misspelled thing. Every time I test accessibility uh, of my website, I hear this word. So uh, just disable this feature. Because this is a search bar, and you have to help your users, but not complain about their grammatic and other things. So just set spell check to false. OK. Uh, and now about buttons. As I said before, uh, the order matter. So we just hop and switch them. OK. But you know, it's not that big problem about switching uh, the order. And the biggest problem is uh, using icons instead of buttons. So be honest and raise your hands if you ever made this. Just used buttons. Come on. Used, bu used icons instead of buttons. OK, for two of you, both of you, <laughs> I'll tell us, OK. So it's, it's OK. We can, so, you know, we can uh, reinvent our buttons. So like after we add some handlers, uh, we can make our elements interactive, so it means focusable to, uh, by adding just tab indexes. Uh, then we can, because we think of our users, we can add some labels, uh, then to be sure that they are buttons, add some roles, but you know, uh, and then we have to uh, handle space bar, but it looks like we're making a boss of a loaf of bread. And yeah, 
And, but we can just wrap our icons in buttons, and that's it. Just do not reinvent the wheel. Uh, but you know, the question is, do we really need those buttons? And it seems like I'm walking on the edge, and, but don't give up on me, because Google has no clear button. Instagram has no search button, but it has a clear button. Uh, and Yandex has both at the same time. So what should we do? To answer this question, you have to keep in mind Jan, yeah, Jan, Jan S, yeah, right. Uh, uh, this is about misspelled thing. See, there is no way we uh, something, something that just irritate users, yeah. And so what should we do? Uh, should we have this, those buttons or, or not? Um, to answer this question, you have to keep in mind uh, that there are different types of search. So Yannix, it's a type of search when you uh, show the results after you uh, click, uh, hit, hit the search button or hit your enter key. And there are variety of uh, user search of data that can be found. But in my example that we will talk about, come on, just works, just work. Uh, okay, there's only one direction of search. Just, uh, for example, uh, questions. So you ask something, and at the same time, you hear the results. So this is the reason to not have, uh, to not have the search button. And the only reason maybe when you have no JavaScript. Uh, yeah, so it will work like, like, a, like a form. Submit, uh, all this stuff. So we won't use buttons. Uh, okay, so after 90 slides, I think it's, talk, it's time to talk about the React bot. <laughs> uh, okay, React is all about components. And in terms of React, we can say that uh, an input is a component. Because we, we saw the markup of the, the input, and we know it has some uh, event handlers. And like some components, React components, it has its own state. And when you, the, the query or the value that you has typed in is stored in, in its state. And when you do not interrupt this logic uh, in terms of React, it means that this component is uncontrolled. So, okay, it works as it is. And you can leave it as it is and get the value using reference to the exact node, DOM node. But we can make it a controlled uh, by keeping the value in our React component and setting the value with React. Why? Because we need the value constantly and we like React to be the single source of truth. So this is the reason to make it controlled. So this is why I add this uh, uh, unchanged function and send the value. OK, and now when it's clear, we can talk about the clear function. So about this cross icon. Uh, it's just a function that calls a function from the outside. But will it work properly? Uh, let's see. So we, OK, we have this input. Click, and it loses focus, and it's, it's really uh, annoying and irritating. So uh, to prevent it, you should uh, you should ensure focus stays on the text box. So to make it, uh, you need the access to the exact DOM node to call the focus function. And this is the reason to make it a bit uncontrolled. So okay, we save the ref uh, to, of to to this input uh, to with with a function like like this which uh, just saves the input to uh, as a property of our uh, input. And OK, it works. But note uh, that you have to uh, declare this function outside the random method, unless React will uh, make a new function every, every time, every render. So that's it. That's our input. And now it's time for the suggester. Yeah, it's our auto component suggestion. Uh, looks quite exhausting, right? And as you might, um, as you might uh, spot, 
uh, we had no logic in our input component. Why? Because our input component is only about appearance. So only HTML and CSS are allowed. So what should we keep all JavaScript in that big component? Uh, let's well watch some video about how we see our mad, mad, mad search bar in action, and then I'll explain uh, the suggest our component step by step. Okay, so, uh, okay, first, we don't make a request when only empty symbols are typed in. Second, we make a request and turn on the search mode after at least two characters are typed in, and third, we turn off the search mode when users empty the input. And that's it. But what is the search mode? Uh, search mode is a state of the app when the, the content is hidden by the result or a preloader. So that's it. And to make the core more, clearable, more clear, uh, we have four steps. First, make your input controlled. So what does it mean from, from the point of view of outer component? Uh, OK, first question from Juniors. Uh, where should I keep the value of my input? Not in the Redux store. Because other components uh, do not know, do, do not, do, don't need to know anything about the exact value of your input. So the outer component is, is it's a better place, maybe, uh, in, my, in my example, uh, it's a better place to store this value. So this is why we have state. And we can set the value uh, in our onChange function, uh, set an empty string in our onCrossClick function, and just put it to the input. And that's it, it's controlled. OK, so uh, second, at least a number of characters to start search. Uh, why a number? Because I can't say uh, the only right way, uh, the only right amount of characters to start to start your search, uh, because it depends on many many things, and you have to talk to your backend developers, your project manager, and to analyze your data. Will it uh, help your users if you start from one uh, character or two characters? But in my example, it's two characters. So what we've changed. Uh, first, we check if uh, the query length is big enough, uh, two characters in this example, and then if it's big enough and the search mode is off, we turn it off, on, sorry. And then if it's big enough, the query, we dispatch our search request. That's it. Okay, and what else? Not empty symbols. symbols. Uh, this function will be evoked every time uh, users somehow changes the input value, uh, but we don't want to show the results every time, uh, like when only spaces uh, are typed in. So let's check. Let's check if uh, the query consists uh, only of uh, these uh, empty symbols with this uh, simple regular expression, like just backslash s, and that's it. Just now we uh, check if uh, it's empty value uh, query. And if uh, the search mode is on, we just turn it off. That's it. And the last step. Um, we should uh, clear the search after users change location. So because we have this component, so the suggestor component, throughout all our roads, and it's just once uh, mount and that's it, and it works. So we have to dispatch, uh, turning off the search mode, uh, every new road component fires uh, component did mount, and check if it's changed uh, in our suggested component. For these purposes, we have new, brand new static method called get the right step from props, which returns an object to update state or not to update nothing. And know that we have to keep the state of search in our state. Yeah, this is because this method is static. And that's it. So now that uh, now, now it's clear, still awful to read, unreadable, absolutely. Uh, but now it's clear. And we can take a look at our uh, input component. And uh, what did I want to say? So. Um, I'm I've been talking about 
20, 29 minutes about uh, all this stuff, and I guess you you are a bit tired of all this markup, accessibility, React things. So my recap won't be about keywords. Uh, so I'd like to say that the only point of this talk was about that we do not develop for ourselves. This is why there was so many things about accessibility. So every time you start building a new website, especially with the search bar, uh, you should keep in mind that there will be a lot of work there will be a lot of research, a lot of testing, because you, as cool developers, you respect people that you develop for. And I hope that my talk will help you to avoid some problems that I've made. And if you want to uh, read the resources, so there are some in my slides uh, at the bottom, and some things that I had no time to talk about, and uh, the last thing, yeah. If you like my talk, this talk, and you want me to talk about part two, uh, how to develop, develop accessible combo boxes, how to work with the result, just tweet. This is my nickname, Ray Proud. My name is Roman Prudnikov, and that's it. Thank you. Well done, sir. Well done. So, search bars. So yeah. wonderful. It's nice to see somebody just taking an effort to go into all the fine little details of what goes. Not all. Not all. Well, there some are many other details. Just just thirty minutes to cover yeah. everything. So right. So essentially, when it comes to search, there are some solutions already out there. For example, tools like Algolia, right? For for Mongolia. Algolia. Ah, Algolia. Algolia, which is like a s API. Well, it's essentially a service like Cloudinary for Images, a search for like one of those microservices API like things uh, where you can just plug and search and just indexes everything and so on. So I'm just wondering at this point so if you design your own search, you build your own search as well, um, how difficult is that? I mean, obviously, if you look into Yandex, if you look into Google, the results are very, very good. So if you're building a custom search, when is it better to use and design and build your own thing? And when is it better to actually reuse Google and Yandex to, for search? Now in your case, it's probably impossible because of maps. Mm, you know that they don't share code with us, so you cannot reuse it if you talk about just components. But I mean, not necessarily components, but like Google search, because you know, powered by Google search, ah, this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it d d depends on uh, the user experience. Like, if you want to show something, you want to, uh, I don't know, do something special when it's searching, and you want to show preloader and some other things. So, so if you want something custom. Yeah, yeah, cu custom things. So it's only about UX, UI. So, yeah. It it's it's cool to have uh, just uh, a Google search when you have no opportunities to uh, make your own. So it's better than nothing. Sure. But if you're talking about UX, so yeah, I think it's the reason to right. to make your own. Okay. Um, now, essentially, if you look into like the shiny new world, the front end world, we have React, we have Angular, we have Vue, we have all those fancy things. So, what do you find more comfortable for your work? And what React or Angular? Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> wondering. I mean, there are at this point, there are many, many libraries and tools, and essentially, also when it comes to you know, build tools and everything, I'm just curious about your workflow part. So, uh, what um, is the comfortable workflow that you? you've been working with for the last year or so? You know, the most com comfortable when uh, all your coworkers, uh, all your teammates uh, know how to write using this library. So that's the thing. So that's the point. Uh, you will use, I, I will use React or Angular or whatever, whatever, whatever uh, if all my teammates know how to use it. So. Okay. But specifically when it comes to maybe maintenance, uh, are there any things like warning signs where you s almost smell something in the code that just about to go wrong maybe in a month or so, where you just feel it's not necessarily wrong per se, but maybe from the architectural perspective, it feels a bit wrong to do it this way. 
Are there any things that just, when you see something in the code where it just jumps to your eyes, but for you, warning, like a warning sign that you should be maybe refactoring it? Um, hmm, hard to answer. I don't know. It's like a yeah, because it just sometimes there is this. Uh, there are some patterns which are yeah, yeah. It's 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 all maybe it's all about experience. So when mm -hmm. you are junior developer and you work only for I don't know six months and you just do not know and you've never seen all these patterns and all this um, I don't know s uh, all these components mm -hmm. that someone's done. So yeah, it's. It's easier to make a mistake, but when you work um, and a lot of cool professionals work with you can help you, uh, yeah. so you will you will start to understand all these patterns. You will see it in uh, someone's code. Uh, so I don't know how to answer this question, but, but it's, it's about okay. experience. Just experience. Okay, um, maybe the last one then. So your work is circling obviously around maps. So I guess not everybody is working with maps, like designing and building with maps in mind. What is the most challenging part in it? In developing the, this web dot, that like website? Not, not necessarily the search bar, but like in general, if you're looking into maps, what's the most difficult part for you? Mm. No, actually, I do not develop uh, everything at that website, but I think that the most uh, hard thing to maybe the two things. So first, it's uh, about uh, maps mm -hmm. and interaction with it, about 3D version of map, about all this geometric things stuff. So you have to be uh, cool at math, at geometric to do all this, uh, uh, all this uh, pro programming for 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 the maps because you and you have to remember all all the caveats that uh, JavaScript has about you know uh, about math, mm -hmm. about giant numbers, about uh, floats and everything else. And the second thing is about how to um, at the beginning how to uh, think up the architecture that will won't won't break in a few years. Because mm -hmm. this is will this will be a uh, website four years like version and a lot of um, a lot of people will maintain it and at the beginning you have to think about many 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 things about okay so a scalability and architecture I yeah think. yeah okay so personally I'm really looking forward to part two so <laughs> with this in mind just tweet just tweet. <laughs> um, I can just say to you maybe <laughs> personally, yeah. yeah. But listen, my thank you so much for the wonderful talk and okay. all the insights. Thank you.